Now, the tables have been turned. Many former market love stocks have been dumped since the US election, while resource stocks and banks have worked their way into the more favourable books. Let's just see if that trend might be reversed in coming months with the CIO of Montgomery Investment Management, Roger Montgomery. Hi, Roger. Hi, How are you going? Nice to be back. Same here, mate. Um, uh, Donald Trump. 16 is a year I'd rather forget. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is this. It was an extraordinary year. Donald Trump wins the, an election. Yep. And stocks that were out of favour and stocks that you often thought were, weren't really worth following came back into favour. And we caught a yeah. big rotation. Yeah, and I made the, the point on the show that a lot of really good stocks got dumped by fund managers as they went chasing that. Correct. Is that That's correct? That's precisely what happened. In fact, I took uh, the equity dealers, um, the, uh, the sales traders, from Morgan Stanley out to lunch just before Christmas, mm. uh, and um, and what was interesting is they said that they were the calls they were exact, exactly receiving. Mm. Get out any price. Uh, we need to buy these other stocks, mm. and as a result, we saw some really high quality companies fall significantly. Mm. Um, let's take a step back from that, and a, and a quick little lesson to kick off the year yeah. about what makes a good business. Mm. So, so a truly good business, an extraordinary business, is one that can retain profits very large amounts of its profits and generate high rates of return on that incremental equity. Now, one way to do that uh, is a business that has a competitive advantage of some description. Generally, in order to sustain that ability, they have to have a competitive Name advantage. Name one, so my view. Oh, REA Group, and I'll talk about it in okay. detail in a minute. Right. Um, OK, so the most valuable competitive advantage of all is the ability to charge a higher price for your product without a detrimental impact on your unit sales volume. Mm. Now, because $6.3 billion has been spent in Australia uh, marketing residential real estate, mm. and 85% of that goes to real estate agents, mm. and 5% goes to REA, or realestate.com.au, they have the ability to raise prices for their advertising without any impact on people's behaviour. Mm. So if you're marketing a $30,000 uh, you've got a $30,000 budget to sell a luxury home in mm. Australia. Uh, $1,500 goes to REA. If they raise their price by 10%, which they did on the 1st of July last year, mm. that's a $150 increase. You're not going to balk at that. You'll keep advertising. And domains are likely to copy them, aren't they? Well, they haven't done it yet, mm. but REA has, mm. and it's worked really well. And despite the fact that they've raised their prices, more people are paying even higher prices for their premier ads and their depth ads. OK. OK, so, so that's ideal. That's the sort of business we want to own. The business that we don't want to own is the one that does the opposite. When it raises its prices, its volume drops. Mm. Or in the face of excess supply, the price goes down. Mm. And that's BHP. Mm. And so while you look at BHP, and here's the problem. So BHP raises its price by a dollar a tonne for iron ore or a cent per pound for copper, and it sells nothing. Mm. That's not the sort of business we want to own. Mm. And yet here's the problem. REA fell 20% from its highs to today. Mm. It's down 20%. BHP's up 73% mm. in the last year. Now, who was but, if you go back, yeah, but if you go back to 2008, mm. OK, eight years ago, BHP is still 45% lower than it was then. Mm. So we're after good businesses. Unfortunately, there are periods where the share prices of good businesses go down. CSL, which is a st company I know you like, mm. um, look at its share price over the last 15 years, or Cochlear over the last 15 years, and yet during the GFC, the share price still fell 30 or 40%. So this happens to good companies. Mm. When it does, it's a good opportunity. So you must be thinking, OK, so 2016 wasn't a great year for you because of... No, because the stock Prices yeah, of these sure. quality companies but, fell. But are you sort of saying, well, look, I'll make up probably this year because. Well, I I'm don't know be... when it'll be. No, but I, I know I can buy good quality companies Cheap. at much better prices than I saw in the end of 2015. For yeah, well, if you look at the end of 2015 today, a lot of these companies are basically unchanged. Mm. So they, they rallied hard early in 2016 and then they were dumped. Mm. And then on top of that, there was the Trump effect. Okay, and we saw the, the belief in the idea that there's going to be inflationary growth policies put in place by Donald Trump, and that's going to be positive for iron ore. But the counterpoint is if he puts tariffs on China, you know, and in Chinese exports, that could reduce Chinese growth rates, mm. and that would be a negative for iron ore demand. But, Roger, who was it who said that markets can remain 
irrational... For longer than you can <laughs> remain liquid. Yeah. Well, Does fortunately... that worry you a little bit? Not at all. Uh... If I was in rubbish companies, if I was in companies that I thought weren't good quality, mm. I would be very worried because that could potentially be a permanent loss of capital. Yeah. But you'd take a company like um, Healthscope mm. or, or Ramsey Healthcare. Mm. Uh, they, they reported in the September quarter mm. that they had surprisingly, uh, surprisingly volatile and weak admission numbers. Mm. Now, if you go back over the last five years, there's been plenty of quarters where it's been weak. But if you go back 20 years, it's always an exponential curve upwards because the biggest contributors to growth in admissions for procedures in private hospitals mm. are the uh, 65 to 74-year-old cohort mm. and the plus 85-year-old cohort. Mm. They that happen to be the two fastest growing demographics in Australia. Mm. So the long run looks very, very good, but there's going to be volatility in between. Yeah. I think that's an opportunity. To, over two days, HealthScope share price fell 27%. Mm. Yeah. And, and what you're arguing is there was no real material deterioration oh, no, in the business? No, there was. The company said if what we saw in the September quarter, particularly September, continues well, for another nine months, yeah. we'll have no EBITDA growth for the year. Mm. And the market was expecting 10% EBITDA growth. Right. Right. But just as, just as they surprised on the downside, the market then derates them and it overreacts on the downside, just the same way the company could come out and say we've had surprisingly robust numbers okay. and, they, and it reverses and it goes up again. Well, you, you, I, I know I got a fantastic kicking goal and the stocks that I liked, like BHP and banks went up sure. on this great rotation. And, and I've got to say, when BHP got to around $14 or so, I said, well, if you're prepared to wait two or three years, it probably is a reasonable buy. Mm. I never expected to see $27. So quickly. Yeah, so I got lucky. Yeah. But... The, 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 I, all, I have been making the point since I've come back this year that, that like a conversation, there must be a lot of really good companies that people like you and other fund managers like you will be looking for, picking through the ruins in the sense of... Oh, like, absolutely. These are going, and that's going to be probably the, the contrarian trend of 2017, do you think? Well, well I don't, I, I'm hoping it'll be this year because, yeah. you know, it's... You know, I'm hoping the pimple on my face goes away very quickly because mm. um, it does feel like one. Mm. Uh, but I, don't, I can't say for certain. Mm. It depends on the performance of the underlying businesses. Mm. Um, I do believe, though, that the record stockpile of iron ore in China and the financial problems that they've got, we saw in December, for example, that because their foreign exchange reserves have been declining so rapidly, they allowed no money to leave China. That tells me that there is a banking problem over there. Mm. That combined with the fact that we've got record stockpiles might put a cap or a lid on, on price rises for iron ore. Mm. And, and who knows? It, it may reverse this year, it may not. Okay. I don't know. So what are the companies that you've mentioned REA? Sure. So what are the companies that you, th you like at current prices? Yep, OK, I'll go through those now. I brought that, I brought that in. I brought some companies in here. So HealthScope is one of them. REA Group mm. is another. Mm. Um, uh, Challenger still looks okay. It's not as cheap as I'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, Vita Group, that's an interesting one. Yeah, Maxine it, it, Horn. it has copped at Vita Group. Oh, absolutely. It? And, and is, yeah. it, the reason it did is Maxine, Maxine Horn... Look, let me say this. Maxine Horn is arguably the best merchant retailer I've ever met mm. in Australia, other than maybe Barry Saunders, who used to run uh, the reject shop. Right. Um, you know, incredible retailer. And... Uh, and, and she's quite surprised at the market's reaction. So, so you can be an expert in business but not an expert in the stock market and be mm. surprised by its reaction. Yep. So what actually happened last year is Telstra, Telstra renegotiated the, the, the terms of some of the products that they sell uh, for, on behalf of Telstra. So by way of background, Vita Group runs is nothing to do with vitamins. They, they own uh, or run uh, Telstra retail stores. Um, and, and 103 under, of them. Under that banner or under different? Under the Telstra banner. Okay, right. Under Good. the Telstra okay. banner. So, so Telstra does all the marketing. Mm. Telstra owns the network. They okay. do all of that work and, and they just run the stores. Yeah. Uh, and, and that renegotiation spooked the market uh, and, and the share price plunged. Mm. Uh, and as a result of that, and I think it was down, gosh, it was down uh, 31%. It's down 31% from its high. So that's a crash. Yeah. In the 1980, terms of 1987, that's a crash. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but... But I've got absolute faith in Maxine to be able to uh, work within the new parameters with Telstra. She's got the best team. She's got the best processes that I've ever seen. And if we had more time, I'd go through them. Mm, okay. And she, and we might do that next time I'm on. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, but the market doesn't have the patience to wait. Yeah. It well, doesn't well, want well, to wait. They'd rather sell that now and buy BHP. BHP's going up. Yeah. Let's buy things that are going up. Mm, yeah. Well, part of our relationship this year is for you to identify those companies that might not make it this year, but maybe the year after or the 
the year sure. after. And if they get a nice rebound of 30%, it's worth waiting a couple of yep, years for it. Exactly. Okay, so what else do you like? Uh, okay, so uh, I've said health scope. Uh, Ramsey is another one that we think is fantastic. But Ra Ramsey's been like near a faultless buy. Is, is there anything out there that worries you at all about Ramsey? The um, French government changing its yeah, attitude? Yeah, the, the, the French attitude towards foreign owners of businesses. Yeah. Um, but I think the growth that's available elsewhere, in, particularly in Australia, yeah. um, is going to more than overwhelm any issues there over time. I also think hospitals won't be the kicking the kicking boy of the government. I think it'll be the manufacturers of prosthetics, for example, mm. uh, that are going to cop it initially. Mm. But we do have to keep an eye on that. All right. Now, one company you talked about last year, uh, I sent here. Yeah. What's your view on that nowadays? So, the, look, I, I, I like the business. Mm. I think the business is going to go just fine. Mm. Um, there are a few brokers making a big song and dance about Matthew Stanton joining the firm. He was from Bauer Media. Mm. He was the CEO at Bauer. Mm. He's now running King Content, which is yeah, that content generation business. Which was a bit one of the little problems, I said. Yeah, but someone said that they wouldn't... lost $2 million. They paid... They, look, they bought the business for about $50 million mm. and they had five-year terms. Presumably the, the terms have, aren't going to be met because the, it lost money, so they've paid maybe $20 or $25 million up front for that business. They lost $2 million last year in that business, which they announced. The, share, the market capitalisation came off $168 million mm. as a result of that. It's such a small part. Mm. You know, they're putting an effort into with Matthew Stanton to try and turn it around. For me, the jury's out. I don't know whether Matthew Stanton is going to transform that business. Mm. I'd argue he probably... I don't know whether he transformed mm. Bauer or not. I'd say it's not a... You know, it's not something you and I have been talking about, no. so maybe he didn't. Mm. Um, so whether he does it at uh, King Content, I don't know. Mm. But I'm looking at the core business, not the King Content you business. Still, you still hold a, re a reasonable yes, hold? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, we like it. I said did, you, did you dollar cost average? Of course we did. Yeah, of course you yeah. would have. Yeah, OK. Um, what about this? Just talk about Trump for a moment, we haven't actually talked sure. about. If, if Trump is able to get away with his infrastructure spending and his tax cuts... Well, presumably he will, because there are Republicans yeah. everywhere now. Yeah. So is that going to sustain this trend that we've seen, that banks are doing well and, and resource companies... No, I think what happens is interest rates go up. Yeah. And in that environment... Um, some of the things that we held dear, for example, you know, high dividend yielding infrastructure stocks or REITs or, you know, that they won't, they suddenly won't look as attractive as they have in the past mm. if interest rates start going up. So I think the bond rate this year, US 10 year bonds, which are at 2.45% overnight, they were 1.36% in July last year. Mm. They could go to 3% this year. Yeah. Uh, and if that happens, then you'll start seeing pressure on global bond rates and that's pressure on mortgages. That puts pressure on credit growth for Australian banks. Banks, and that's an issue on top of the fact that they need more capital now, mm. so their return on equity is capped. Mm. And, and do you also think that the Reserve Bank's going to be forced to raise interest rates or cut interest rates? I don't think it matters because you can see mortgage rates going up out of cycle, mm. yeah. particularly if the bond rate goes Fixed up. Fixed rates in particular. And, and, and that will change asset prices if that happens. Okay, Roger, mm. thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure, Peter. Roger Montgomery from uh, Montgomery Investment.